I would like to talk about an aspect of SARS-CoV-2 which you may not have thought about it, that this, these sequences of this virus can become a, made, a permanent part of your genome and possibly influence the disease, although this is more speculation. So if you look at the pandemic, viruses can escape, viruses can establish themselves in humans, and they did this in 2019 with the SARS-CoV-2, presumably coming from China. And this really created an enormous health problem in the world, lockdowns, and also a major effort to control this by scientific research, by developing a vaccine. And the vaccine was really um, developed within one year, which is unheard for vaccines, um, and to help to control the pandemic. Now, the virus is a very complex virus. It's a, the RNA virus, which is the biggest RNA we know. It has structural proteins like the spike protein and others um, on, the, on, the, on the right here. And um, it has also 25 non structural proteins, which really help the virus to reproduce and to damage the cellular responses, like the innate immune system. So this virus has an enormous um, array of potential targets for mutations, and this makes this pandemic so unpredictable. And the diseases, you, uh, you, you're probably well aware of the diseases, um, it can affect any organ like the brain, and you lose your smell, your taste, um, and you get endospheritis, cardiovascular, systemic diseases, like the heart, liver, kidney, intestinal systems, the lung being the very first attack of the virus uh, leads to lung dysfunction, and any, any major organ can, can be affected. It's rather um, complex. So the, the disease, the course of the disease, is briefly outlined here. You get infected, you have virus, very high titers of virus for the first week or 10 days, and then the virus becomes undetectable by the most sensitive methods. But you can detect viral RNA by the very sensitive PCR assay for weeks or months. Why? What the source of this virus? And that's what really sparked my interest. And um, the hypothesis we came up with was, could that I come from a retrovirus uh, background, I will talk about this briefly, could SARS-CoV-2 RNA be reverse transcribed and retrointegrate into the human genome and thus become a permanent part of the infected cell? And could this hypothesis really explain why patients remain PCR positive in the absence of any detectable virus? No retrovirus. No retrovirus. HIV would be a good example. You're probably familiar with. Retrovirus has it is not in this part of its life cycle integration, and you can see it here. The virus um, gets unpacked, uh, gets reverse transcribed. It's the RNA virus, and then integrates into the genome. And you see the viral sequence in white, uh, fused to cellular sequences at the at the edge. So that's a retrovirus, and the retrovirus. Um, it's called the provirus. On this DNA copy, then the progeny RNA is made and the, the proteins for virus production. <clears throat> so that's well established. SARS-CoV-2 really replicates in the cytoplasm, HIV in the nucleus. And there's not known, no known evidence for integration being important for coronavirus for SARS-CoV-2. Now, let me come to the central dogma of biology. The central dogma is the, the uh, inf um, information flow goes from the DNA to the RNA to the protein. Now, what the rate of viruses, which are RNA viruses, really taught us was that, the, as I said, the virus can be re reverse transcribed into a DNA copy, the provirus, and this then be um, transcribed to RNA that gives rise to protein. So that is really the... the the um, 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 really changed the central dogma. The question is, can SARS-CoV-2 also integrate and use some of the cellular machinery to do this? And we looked at this in, with genome sequencing. I don't want to go into any details here. And we proved in a 
positive control, and I will come back to define this, the positive control is which overexpresses a transposon, which is the motor of integration, um, as I will tell you in a minute, that there were 3,000 copies of, virus, of viral sequences integrated per 1,000 cells, so three per cell. Now, I should say this is not the whole virus. It's a very small part of the virus, at most 5%. So there's no way ever this integration can lead to virus production. But the sequences are there. Now, if you now look in cells which don't overexpress, not the positive control, um, but don't overexpress this transpose on line one, then we see that the integration frequ uh, frequency is much lower, 3,000 fold lower, one copy per 1,000 cells. And that we find in cells infected in culture as well as in patients. OK, so what I told you is that multiple approaches have shown us that SARS-CoV-2 sequence can integrate into the genome of the infected cell, becoming a permanent part of the genome. And these sequences um, will be at most 5% of the genome. Now, who mediates this integration? It's the line one, the transposon. Now, line one is a transposable element, which is a large part of the genome, and is thought to play a role in, the, in, in genome evolution. And this gives you the, 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 um, the, um, the map of this. Now, line one is, is really expressed at a very low level. And people argue, well, how could this ever play a role in the disease? Well, it turns out that line one is expressed, is activated in aging, in cancer, and in, when you stress cells, for example, by virus infection, and cytokine exposure. And all these are risk factors for, um, for COVID-19. So we know, we believe that the virus integrates, can integrate virus sequences, but we don't know what the relevance for the diseases, and I will come later back to this. But I want to come to another issue, which is of major um, public interest. Namely, could vaccine RNA also integrate? And this is, of course, of concern to many, because if, in, if sequence integrate in your genome, they could cause mutations like cancer, or could cause autoimmunity. So we don't know this. And so people are very concerned about this. And there's a lot of misinformation, as you're probably all aware, which uh, really prevents people to take a vaccine. For example, uh, people argue you might turn into a monkey if you get vaccinated. <clears throat> so the question, so what I showed you is that virus infection produces internally lots of viral RNA, and that can integrate. There's no doubt. The question is, if you take virus if you take RNA, same RNA, but not coming from an infection, but from a transfection or from vaccine, can this integrate? This really addresses this major question. So we looked at this. And again, the positive control is you're using the overexpression of line one. That's just, and, and I showed you 3,000 copies per 1,000 cells after virus infection, after transfection with the same RNA produced in the virus, it's only three. So it's thousandfold less. But this is the positive control. So look at the, at the normal cells, and I showed you before, in normal cells, integration for virus infection is one copy per thousand cells. And of course, we didn't see anything in the RNA transfection. This means no, none, one or zero means only it's thousandfold less presumably be from our positive result than virus infection. So we believe uh, it may be even less than that. So we believe that viral RNA does not integrate to any appreciated um, um, amount. But we have to, of course, ta really test directly vaccine RNA, not naked RNA, as we did. And we have to study um, the spike RNA, which is in a vaccine. And that is being, being done. But let me come to the question, could integration play a role in the disease? It's one of the major questions of interest. And could it, for example, um, contribute to the long-term effects of um, SARS-CoV-2, long COVID, which is really frightening? And um, 
So we know the virus in patients get expressed from integrated copies, fused to cellulose copies. But the question we don't know is, is it also translated to a protein? Could it give rise to a new antigen, a neoantigen, which could affect the immune response, which could affect uh, cause autoimmunity? We don't know these. These are important questions which uh, need to be addressed. So let me come to the end. And we talked a lot about global threats. And clearly, the, the pandemic was a global threat. And the key issue was, how, how did the world react to this? And uh, how did we advance the science to come to rather rapidly to the um, vaccine? And um, this means sharing science. And I think it was done ex exemplary in this pandemic to, to help solve uh, the immediate needs, the medical needs. Um, maybe better than in the climate change, uh, the, the, the uh, um, theme of this meeting. And my final thought is, I think we also have to look at unorthodox possibilities, in this case like uh, integration, and explore them, because they might give us new information. And with this, I would like to change and thank you for your attention. <laughs> And I was actually wondering whether the, uh, you, you're seeing more integration in cells of, of organ systems particularly affected by long COVID, because it's not all cells yeah. that are affected by... So, we have looked in patients, but in patients, the data are very different. We, we cannot see the DNA integration directly. It's too rare. We have to see it indirectly, and we do. So, we have to do this in tissue culture, and we can make different types of tissue, tissue culture cells from embryonic stem cells that we do. And there we do find indeed that virus integration chain, or virus infection and replication is dependent on the cell type. And this presumably also will affect um, integration, but it's very difficult to quantify this. And those cell types most implicated in long COVID? Well, the cell types in long COVID, it's not really clear. I mean, the lung cells are infected, but the cells die. So um, it, it's very toxic, this virus. But other cell types do survive much better. So they could be the source, for example, of a neoantigen. But again, it's all speculation. We don't know that. Wow, a million questions to ask. Can we take some questions from the audience? Yeah, I'm Barrett Mons from the Netherlands. Uh, now in data, we're originally also a vaccine person. So my question is, have you looked at in some cases, were you able to look where the DNA did integrate? Because you only mentioned the fact that it could produce neoproteins, but I could imagine that what we see now is that many of the genetic diseases, for example, that we work on, are not located in the genes at all. They're in transcription star sites right. or whatever, so you make the wrong protein in the wrong tissue, for example. Yeah. So I could imagine that if you have viral integration and it disrupts the transcription star site or whatever, that causes all kinds of post-COVID syndromes without being a neoprotein right. as such. I think that's a key question, and we're looking at this, but it's very, very difficult to address. The reason is the virus is very toxic. So you infect cells, and they die within two or three days. So you don't have much time. Um, in patients, we can't look directly in integration. We have to integrate via the RNA, the chimeric RNA, the fused cellular sequences, fused to viral sequences. We look at this. But again, to get to the integration, to the question, is there any preference for integration, it's very difficult. So we, we're just trying to devise methods where we can do that and to look at this. But that's a, not an easy and straightforward process. But I think it's a key question. Um, we're going to take a question from our online audience. Um, this is Helen from Canada, uh, also a question about the implications for long COVID sufferers. What time scales do you think we're talking about in trying to uncover these mechanisms for long COVID? Well, it's always difficult to <laughs> make prediction in, in science, so I find it very difficult to answer that question. So I think there are many, many issues which need to be resolved, um, and um, the more people uh, hopefully will work on this. So I don't know. So uh, first of all, I introduce myself. Nehed Ismail from University of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, my question to you related to the risk factor or the, in, uh, you said that long COVID happened, uh, sorry, the integration happened 
when you have people who have cancer or old age or when there's inflammation. However, we do see long COVID in adults and they are not under any of yeah. those risk factors. So do you think that the integration or some other mechanism so, happen that so, account for long COVID? So I did not say that um, if you have these preconditions like long age or cancer, that you increase integration. I said line one, which is a motor of doing this, increases in expression. So it's plausible to argue that indeed line one plays this role in patients and it's expressed in patients which are in distress. So that's just so, so clarified. We haven't really shown this directly. Um, it's, it's a compl complicated question. But really, the to, to, it, long COVID, this really awful late stage complication has no, the severity of in infection has no predictive value. Or risk factors don't have predictive value. It seems to be like a stochastic problem. And so we don't understand it really what it's doing. It seems to be autoimmune disease very often, an autoimmune reaction. But exactly what triggers it, we don't know. So I think the hypothesis that integration might do this as a stochastic process, well, it's possible. I'm going to take one more very brief question. Joram Vodovots, University of Pittsburgh. Um, I have a question on the experiment where you compared the line one overexpressing cells to the normal cells. Did you also try a condition of the normal cells stimulated by cytokines to see yes. if that increased? the amount of integration? It, uh, no, we didn't look at integration. We looked at line one expression. So you expose cells to cytokines as it produced in patients. It increases line one expression. That's what we did. We didn't look at integration. OK. Thank you very much, Professor Janish. <laughs>